Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, how a sustained nutrition program can mean better results for your herd. Plus, we'll learn how one Kansas operation is benefiting from DNA technology. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, besides the severe weather, cattlemen tell us that one of the biggest challenges they face is regulation. Policy debates in Washington and the federal regulations that are put in place often have a big impact on what a cattleman can and cannot do on the ranch or farm. We ask NCBA President Bill Donald what he believes are some of the top concerns facing cattlemen this fall. Well, I think uh, we can boil a lot of those down to overregulation. This administration is trying to do through regulation what it couldn't do through legislation. We've got uh, an onslaught of regulations, whether they be from the EPA with uh, control of dust, uh, trying to get the Clean Water Act uh, regulated through the EPA, and trying to uh, declare greenhouse gas a pollutant and control the very air that we breathe. On the uh, another hand, another front, we have the gypsy rules, which are more government regulation, which involve the way that we market cattle in this country. Those rules have the potential to adversely impact a lot of branded programs and a lot of alternative marketing agreements that producers have entered into voluntarily to get a better price for their cattle. So we're very concerned about those types of regulations, I would say over-regulations. NCBA is continually working to prevent policies that adversely affect profit opportunities for those who work in the beef cattle industry. Why not join in the fight by becoming an NCBA member? Find out more by visiting the new and improved beefusa.org or calling 1-866-USA-BEEF. The other issue on top of cattlemen's minds these days is the weather. Historic drought conditions in the southern part of the country, as well as heavy rains and flooding in the north, have made this a very unsettling year. But cattlemen are doing their part to help climate watchers keep track of this year's wild weather. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brad Bulla has the story. 2011 has been shaping up as a year of weather extremes in the United States. It's even making some longtime weather observers sit up and notice. Some of the recent heat waves have been right up there among some of the most uh, dramatic uh, observed heat waves in recent years, such as the 100 plus weather in the mid-Atlantic in New England even in late July. The flooding on the Missouri, unprecedented in, in a number of locations. Uh, and so yeah, it, it has been extreme, although again, I say, if you go back to other years, you'll find unprecedented extremes in different parts of the country for different sets of reasons. So there's always extremes going on, but this, this year is attention getting. The record high temperatures are contributing to bone dry conditions that have dried up pastures in the southern part of the country and have caused hay prices to soar. Many correlations of drought and heat when it comes to the summertime. Uh, a couple reasons why that's the case. When vegetation is sparse, when the ground is dry, the energy from the sun immediately heats up the surface and the air is heated from the ground up. Uh, when the vegetation is growing, uh, grass is green, vegetation lush, then a lot of that energy goes into evaporating uh, water and growing the vegetation and the air doesn't heat up so much. Now it's humid and uncomfortable, but it doesn't heat up as much. And so this year in the south central parts of the country has been the core of the heat wave and heat has emanated out from there. It's been very much related to this, high, this dry, uh, sparse vegetation impacts of the recent drought. And even with all their forecasting, Nolan and other experts are not sure if we've reached the bottom of the current drought. We know some of the really big droughts. You look at uh, the 1930s, the 1950s, they did have multi-year persistence. The current drought, as it relates to conditions in Texas, New Mexico, and adjacent areas, 
is of a severity equal to or in some cases even greater than drought conditions experienced in the 30s and 50s. Not quite as widespread in area. So there's this, this sense that, wow, this is similar to some of the droughts of the past that had multi-year duration. But the fact of the matter is that weather patterns change, change abruptly and we're not always able to have a handle on that months in advance. This current drought is reminding some people of the Dust Bowl of the 1930s, when years of very dry conditions led to widespread soil erosion. But Nolan says that comparison is not accurate. There are vulnerable areas of the Great Plains where all it takes is a couple of years of way below average precipitation and above average temperatures, where soil conditions, you have more sandy soils, and where we can start seeing soil erosion like we have in the past. Fortunately, for most areas, the land management changes that we've made since the 1930s are helping hold the ground in place much better. I don't think we're going to see a repeat of the Dust Bowl era. That doesn't mean we aren't going to see some dust storms because we saw them already this year, just not of the same magnitude. One reason climatologists are able to keep such close track of weather conditions is thanks to volunteers, many of them ranchers and cattlemen across the country who regularly check their rain gauges and send in their data as part of the National Weather Service Cooperative Observer Network. That information gives officials an increasingly clearer picture of regional climate conditions. Now we're starting to see just how much variation there is at the local scale. We would love to have hundreds more volunteers across the country helping, and it's something most uh, cattlemen are doing already, checking rain gauges and seeing how that relates to their, their forage production. But share the data so that we can all learn what's going on. It's really great. Reporting from Fort Collins, Colorado, I'm Brad Bullif for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now you can become part of the nationwide volunteer network of weather watchers who track the variable weather that impacts you, your neighbors, and the entire country. For more information, just visit our website at cattleman cattleman.org. There's no doubt about it. In terms of the weather, this year has been one for the record books. We recently had the chance to ask cattlemen about the weather and its impact on their operations. Miserable. Very, very hot, very, very dry. Um, a lot of fires, a lot of uh, wind, and a lot of dust. Dry. Real dry. We've had probably less than three inches this year, total rainfall. Crops suffered, uh, livestock has suffered, a lot of liquidation going on. Uh, it's a pretty sad situation for rainfall. <laughs> we have no weather in our area. We haven't had but a quarter of an inch of rain since last October. And so the steers are having to go. They're leaving in the next couple of weeks. So well, then we won't even have an operation. So it's critical. We're pretty dry. Uh, it seems like that in Missouri, pretty much south of the Missouri River, uh, you get into very dry conditions. And as you go further south into the Boot Hill, or I mean, excuse me, into the um, Ozarks, um, it, it, it's extremely dry. Well, currently, we our ranch runs right along the Mouse River, which is flooded there completely. It's, it's at the all-time high. So currently our flood, our ground is all flooded. The uh, hayland has got three to four feet of water on it. We've lost quite a bit of pasture. Um, the farm ground up in that area, we probably got about 50% of normal in. So it's, we're really, really wet. We've had the best year. Basically, the winter was cold and the snow got pretty hard, but, uh, but we had above normal moisture then and through the summer. We've had the best summer that we've had since 85, probably. If you're one of the many cattlemen who have been affected by the severe weather and are in need of hay or pasture, you can locate additional resources by visiting our website at cattleman cattleman.org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, the Prina program has made a difference in the cattle and it's, it's very visible. How a sustained nutrition program can help keep your herd healthy and profitable. Plus, we head to Nebraska and spend a day in the life with a vice chair of the Federation of State Beef Councils. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD TV. Draxon, clearly Cattleman's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death loss. And with Draxon, we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see, nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Consumers count on America's cattlemen to deliver quality beef every time. So in your daily work to raise cattle, keep quality top of mind in everything you do, in the care, feeding, and handling of your animals. You can be a part of a national program that provides sound, proven guidelines for beef cattle production that will establish you as a leader and responsible stockman. Beef Quality Assurance, or BQA, is a national program funded by the Beef Checkoff that can help you strengthen your operation, improve cattle care, drive more value to the bottom line, and increase consumer confidence in the quality of America's beef. Producers across the nation have embraced the BQA program because of their commitment to be the world's best producers of beef and because assuring beef quality is our job, not someone else's. Find out how you can become BQA certified. Visit the website bqa.org. Welcome back. The cattle industry is used to dealing with the unexpected, whether it's a rapidly changing market or shifting consumer trends. And producers need to keep on their toes, taking into account how things like weather and forage quality are affecting their cattle. With that unpredictability in mind, Purina Mills has a product that can be customized to suit your herd's specific needs. Reporter Brian Baxter has more from Eastern Colorado. Fraser Farms near Lyman, Colorado is a cow-calf operation that relies on native forage year-round, a factor Joe Fraser considers one of his ranch's strengths. We feel like that really helps us both in terms of uh, keeping the cows in the best condition possible and uh, lowering our supplemental costs, or feed hay costs particularly. Joe and his wife Cindy have practiced intensive grazing for decades and have been working with Purina products for nearly as long, bringing needed minerals, proteins, and other supplements to their herd. Using a combination of tubs and 500-pound super blocks, the Fraser herd has access to feed around the clock. So what do we have to help sustain the, the forage out here? And, and I think this is where the accuration really comes back, super blocks them back and gives them the support on their grass and, and, and this type of thing. Definitely the Prina program has made a difference in the cattle and it's, it's very visible. You can, it's easy to see. It needs to fit your program. And where we're out on grass like this um, year round and we don't have them in, to, in feed pens or something like that, it's got to be able to, to fit that, to be flexible for us, to be um, transportable. Uh, so with self feeders and that in their own um, self-limiting diet, why that, that works well for us. By using Purina's AccuRation program year-round to supplement the available forage, the Fraser's cattle snack eat, ensuring they get what Purina calls sustained nutrition. Sustained nutrition is a management concept in which we supplement the cow herd to provide a more balanced level of nutrition 365 days of the year. The goal is to get the cows in an optimal body condition and maintain that condition throughout the year. Sustained nutrition not only affects the cows, but also their calves. In fact, providing added feed to sustain the body condition of the cow both before and after calving is a critical factor for the future of a herd like the Frasers. There is much research indicating that cows in a body condition score 5.5 to 6 at calving and maintaining that condition through the breeding season will come back in heat quicker they will conceive sooner and they will milk heavier, resulting in increased weaning weights. 
Think about how we generally manage the cow herd. Are the cows in the same body condition at weaning as they were six to seven months earlier at calving? Generally not. We actually expect our cows to lose weight during that time. Why do they lose weight and condition? Well, we see a weight loss when the grass first greens up and that forage volume is very limiting. We may have compromised forage quality and availability during the summer due to the forage type that's being grazed. And then there are issues with drought. Add to that, the cow has just calved, she is producing milk and trying to get rebred. Lots of things are occurring that may cause a weight loss and condition if nutrition is not sufficient. Sustained nutrition is uh, something that we've been practicing or using in the last, uh, I think, four years. And really like that because that gives the, the cattle the chance to walk in, get that when they need it, and, and out. One of the things that I've always been bothered by is when you come out with a cake truck and they're just a mad scramble to try to get some nutrition. And the big cows get it all, the little cows just stand back. And in this case, you know, they really have a chance to supplement their needs. And, and again, in a stressless environment. So we really like that particular product. We'll have more on sustained nutrition for your cattle when we return. Try it for 60 days and let's see the difference it'll make in your animal. When you have an all-in-one feed, it makes all the difference in the world. It's, it's been a very good product for us. But my chickens are really great layers, and I think that's because of how I feed them. They look more complete, they fill out really well. You get exceptional gain, you get exceptional growth. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. Take the 60-day challenge and save up to $55 on Purina Feed. Sign up at PurinaDifference.com. John Deere K-Series Loaders. You asked for a machine beefy enough to handle your harsh work environment, and John Deere delivered. Axle coolers, reversing fans, and a dual hydraulic differential lock keep your machine productive for years to come. And with dozens of options, this loader is king of the cattle business. Your dealer can spec a K-Series loader that's just right for you. See your dealer today. Education, networking, opportunity, and fun. That's what you'll find at the 2012 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. Get your ticket to ride with your fellow cattlemen and women in the country music capital of the world. You'll find cutting-edge education, top-of-the-line technology, and entertainment that can't be beat. Don't miss your ticket to ride to the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee, February 1st through the 4th, 2012. For more information, visit beefusa.org. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Brian Baxter in eastern Colorado, where ranchers are learning more about the benefits of sustained nutrition programs. The idea of sustained nutrition is a change for many cow-calf producers who traditionally have allowed their cows to lose weight over the winter season. Research indicates that approach can be more costly than you might expect. Now, historically, we have been concerned about proper nutrition for the cow during that last three or so months prior to calving. We know that her nutrition requirements increase during that time because that calf in utero has two-thirds of its growth occurring during that last trimester. But research is showing that proper nutrition at conception and during the first and second trimesters is important as well. This nutrition will provide proper placental development in the cow, but also organ development and cell differentiation along with the initiation and growth of muscle cells in that newly developing fetus. In fact, keeping body condition on the cow is key not only to her long-term health, but to the lifelong health of the developing calf as well. More and more research is validating that if the fetus does not obtain optimal nutrients at certain stages of development, the performance of that calf after birth can be affected. Epigenetics has emerged recently as the idea that environmental factors such as nutrition, weather, or any type of stressor causes the genetics of the animal to behave differently even though the genes themselves do not change. These changes last a lifetime, they are permanent, and they may be passed on to future generations. No doubt input costs are a concern for cattlemen, but programs like Purina's Accuration deliver a strong return on investment in the form of a more productive cow herd. Research is relatively recent, but more emphasis is being placed in this area. 
There are data to show that replacement heifers from dams that received supplemental nutrients had improved pregnancy rates and had more calves born in the first 21 days of the calving season. They also require less assistance at calving. In the same study, the steer calves from supplemented dams had heavier carcasses, more marbling, and fewer health issues from weaning to finish than the steers from the unsupplemented dams. Well, one of the things about uh, the sustained nutrition with the Accuration products and such is that uh, we're feeding that calf in the cow. And um, university research has shown that that prepares that calf not only for when it's born, but beyond that. And we've shown that the last three years we've had all of our, we keep all our, retain all our uh, feeder cattle. And the last three years they've all graded over 85% choice. Um, and they all fit a really narrow window in terms of, of when they go to slaughter. So uh, that's to me a real plus because it, it prepares them quite some time before that. Um, you know, some people like to rough them out and then think they're going to push them at the end and, and uh, you know, they need that nutrition all the way along there. So I feel like that's a, a, a big plus for us. Oh yeah, it, it pays. It's an investment. I know that the NCBA and, and, and some universities have talked about how um, the feed costs are your greatest per, per animal cost that you have, okay? And so what you want to do is you want to make the most of that. It's, it's an idea of reducing that cost, but you reduce it because you don't have to feed as much to catch up if you've not had that sustained nutrition. So that sustained nutrition keeps them at a level where they're, they're maintenance, rather than whether you're having to actually push them really hard. Um, but the tubs, uh, the super blocks, uh, as well as the accuration and the self-feeders um, is a good delivery tool. It's very consistent. And the other thing is the cattle expect that. I mean, they see the tub, they know what that is, or the block, they see the feeders, they know what that is. I like to use those for pasture management in terms of if I've got a, an area where I want to uh, do a little more intensive grazing, I'll move it there, you know, so there, now I'm using the cattle as my tool. And, uh, and those nutritional supplements are a part of that. And getting started with a program to implement sustained nutrition is easy to do. A sustained nutrition program starts with providing the cow herd a high quality mineral program that provides consistent consumption, such as the Purina Wind and Rain Minerals. To provide supplemental protein and energy that may be deficient in your forages, Land O'Lakes Purina Feed has developed products with intake modifying technology that allows the cow herd to be supplemented 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. Intake of these supplements is directly correlated to forage quality, forage quantity, and the cow needs. We sure don't have all the answers but supplying sustained nutrition for the cow herd while controlling intake based upon the forage quality sure seems to make sense. For the Frasers, the Purina Accuration program and the goal of sustained nutrition for their cows has delivered real results. One of the things we do when we uh, wean the calves and then preg check the cows, we take a body score right then and then monitor that through the winter and spring time. And prior to this, we'd have a lot of fluctuation in there, kind of depending on what the pasture condition was or other factors. But now, even though there's, there's still those variable um, environmental factors, um, it, they, they just really level out really well. And in fact, this year, I think we probably gained almost a, a body score through the winter time. We didn't have as near as difficult a winter as some, but. Um, yeah, so that's something that's going to help us now as we calve because they're in much better condition. Reporting from Lyman, Colorado, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now for more information about Purina's products, visit our website at cattlemen to cattlemen org. We'll be right back. Quality matters to me because I'm responsible for managing the natural resources under my care, providing clean water and healthy feed, and creating an environment that fosters new life. I care for mother cows and newborn calves, nurturing them through the beginning of the life cycle. The entire beef industry is relying on me to provide a quality product they can work with. This is the beginning of the American beef industry. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. 
when respiratory diseases hit the herd, it doesn't take long before your calves are drowning in complications. Unless you have them prepared, get them ready with Pyramid 5 plus Prespons SQ. This one easy vaccine will protect your herd from a range of ailments. Hey, there is plenty of fresh air out here. Make sure your calves get their fill. Go on now. Take care of your cattle, and they'll take care of you. Welcome back. Farmers and ranchers are deeply involved in their communities. Many even go an extra mile or two in service to the industry they love. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck has more from central Nebraska. I think any time you come into this industry, uh, you think you can change it overnight, and I think you figure out fairly quick that this business is a marathon and not a sprint. Craig Uden is a fourth generation Nebraska cattleman and partner at the Dar Feedlot in the central part of the state. He also owns and manages three commercial cow calf operations. He believes business success is personal. We've got a lot of customers throughout the United States and uh, those relationships develop into friendships and it's a win-win for all. As they grow, we grow and uh, the information exchange has just been uh, tremendous and uh, it's been a pleasure to be a part of this industry and watch it develop and watch the industry mature over the last approximately 30 years. In recent years, Craig has stepped back from many of his day-to-day -day management duties to serve as a volunteer beef industry leader at the state and national level. Craig says he serves for several reasons. I'm one of these guys that has a hard time saying no. I get involved in a lot of things because I do think it's important. Somebody has to go back and somebody has to uh, help lead this thing forward. As we bring on these new young people into the industry, if we're, not, if we're not happy and we're not moving the industry along, why would we expect those folks to join in and, and become involved? So I think you have to give back to the industry that's brought you to the table. I think it's beneficial for the industry, uh, both now and for the future. Another reason Craig participates is his belief that state beef councils across the country can pool funds, beef up national programs, and put the entire checkoff dollar to work. Well, we're a large cattle state, but we don't have a lot of people. And we want to move the money where the people are. So with the Federation connection, we move that money into the Federation that we can move that money on, on national partnerships we can better utilize our dollars and, and uh, get, it to, get the word out to the, where the people are. We've done some partnering with uh, other states as well, uh, but our, our main connection is moving that dollar where the people are. And I, I look for that to continue. I think that's just wise, wise for us to do and being good steward of the dollar to, to put the money where the people are instead of keeping it at home. And uh, with the Federation, there's 45 state qualified beef councils out there. And once that money goes in, then that can be filtered out to those beef councils as well. And that's where the people are. A lot of those, those other uh, state beef councils are the opposite of Nebraska. They have a lot of people, but not very many cattle. So they can, they can tap into these resources that we help provide, and they can help move our product along to their large population areas. Craig says united efforts to maximize checkoff dollars are critical in providing the industry with its best bottom line gauge, continually increasing consumer confidence and demand for beef. We need to pull together and we need to work to forge ahead. We've got good prices, we've got a good product. We need to keep our eye on the ball and keep moving the needle on beef demand. At day's end, like most cattlemen, Craig sees his industry as an enduring way of life. It's very rewarding to work with people and see them succeed. And, you know, I've had customers that uh, were small like me and have grown over the years and, and benefited. And now what's really fun is uh, I've got several generations involved. Reporting from Cozad, Nebraska, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. 
As Craig Uden mentioned, 45 beef councils across the country collect the $1 per head beef checkoff. Find contact information about your state's beef council under the Federation tab at beefusa.org. Record keeping is extremely important for cattlemen, no matter what kind of operation you work on. And here to tell us about a great way to keep track of those records is Grace Webb, Manager of Producer Education for NCBA. Grace, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Well, first of all, tell us just a little bit about what the Red Book is. The Red Book, as it's been known for 25 years, is a great way for producers to keep better records by tracking the daily production activities out in the field. And there's a lot of information that you can record in there. Give our, our viewers just a highlight of some of the things that you can track within that Red Book. Okay. The Red Book provides over 100 pages to record daily production activities, um, cattle handling, herd health, pasture usage, spa worksheets as well as Beef Quality Assurance National Guidelines, such as care and husbandry practices, feedstuffs, and injection site quality control. And breeding and calving records, lots of other things as well. Lots of other things. We have yeah. a calendar in the back and notes section. It's very handy yeah. for producers. Great, great stuff. So for folks who want their 2012 version, what should they do? The 2012 version will be available October 1st. They can either go through the website, this is what the new book looks like, okay. go through the website and order it directly, or they can call me if they feel more comfortable. Um, sometimes people do, and the book is also available for customization at 100 books or more. That's great. Thank you so much for being on the show and Thank you. invite everybody to, to call you or, or, or visit the website and take advantage of that. To order your Red Book, visit us online at beefusa.org or give us a call at 1-800-525-3085. Red Books will be available for purchase starting October 1st. Stay with us. We'll be right back. For 30 years, Whitestone Farm in Aldi, Virginia has offered superior quality Angus genetics. I am so very proud that Whitestone Farm is the brand of quality. Now is your opportunity to visit Whitestone Farm for their annual fall production sale at noon on Saturday, October 15th. This is the place to find premium Angus genetics and top quality Angus cattle. Once again in this sale, we'll be offering all of our three-year-old females along with their heifer calves. This year's sale will have 30 open embryo heifer calves from the heart of our embryo program, as well as a select set of fall yearling heifers. They'll also sell a select group of fall yearling pasture-ready bulls. Beautiful Whitestone Farm is only 40 minutes from our nation's capital in Aldi, Virginia. This is where you'll find Angus genetics that pay. With the right disposition, calving ease, and more, Whitestone Angus genetics will work for you. So once again, we'd like to welcome you to our Whitestone brand of quality sale where there's something for everyone. To find out more and request a sale book, call 703-327-4863 or visit the website whitestonefarm.com. Whitestone Farm genetics don't cost, they pay. Want to stay up to date on beef industry news and the National Cattlemen's Beef Association? Check out the new and improved BeefUSA.org. It's where you can find news on both the Federation of State Beef Councils and the work of NCBA on Capitol Hill. Plus links to some of your favorite NCBA programs like the blog Beltway Beef, the 2012 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, and the latest from Kevin Ochsner and NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Join us today at the new and improved BeefUSA.org. Welcome back. Successful breeding programs often require years of experience and careful planning. But a growing number of producers are also using genetic profiling technology for faster results and to ensure the quality of their cattle remains consistent. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck has more from Kansas. The Lyons family has been raising registered Angus cattle in the Flint Hills of Kansas for more than 30 years. Primarily we are providing Angus seed stock to the cow-calf commercial cattlemen uh, in Kansas and in other states surrounding and around the country. Primarily 
our operation is, is geared toward that commercial cattleman, and certainly we've been uh, privileged, if you will, to have uh, uh, seed stock operators as well participating and purchasing seed stock from our operation. The Flint Hills, you know, it's lush grass, makes the cattle do good, and, and the feed cost, you know, uh, we don't have to grain them every day. It's a, uh, they run out and, and just kind of work on their own. The ranch has had an annual sale for the last 24 years, and its sale catalogs underscore that all of the operation's bulls were DNA tested. Our customers are used to receiving a catalog about three weeks before the bull sale, and that has all the EPDs and information about, about the bulls that are for sale. Um, we talked a lot in the advertising and print, um, radio, and on the internet, uh, on our website, lionsranch.com. We talked a lot about the DNA and how this was going to provide a greater accuracy and predictability for our customers. Lions Ranch has been using the identity profile for Angus to help analyze its cattle for 21 economically important traits. The profile provides genomically enhanced EPDs for all animals, but young animals profit the most from the identity profile's significantly improved accuracy rate. Now this increase in accuracy can really take the risk out of selecting young animals, whether it be uh, replacement heifers or uh, uh, sire candidates. And this can benefit not only the Angus breeder as they're deciding which animals to put back into their own herds and, and those animals to merchandise, but more importantly, really their customer, the commercial ranch, to uh, make better selection decisions that impact their, uh, their own herds. For us this year, the Igenity program looked like one that we wanted to incorporate and try. So uh, rather than just to sample a few, of the bulls that we were offering. We did every single bull that we offered in the sale. We felt like that gave us a better profile and increased the accuracy quite a bit from just a non-progeny um, offering that we were offering. The bulls that we were offering, of course, don't have any progeny. So it was important to us to do what we could to increase that accuracy. The Igenity program offered that. And so as we looked at, for example, the marbling trait, we were able to move that number for accuracy from a 0.17 to a 0.38, which is quite substantial, um, equal to having 16 progeny recorded. And so as you look at that, the bottom line was our customers were able to make decisions with a lot more degree of confidence that that was going to maintain that number. And we'll have more on the role of DNA technology and the role it can play on your operation when we return. Comprehensive, practical, powerful. Now's the time to put the power of DNA to work in your herd with the comprehensive identity profile. The inside information from Igenity can help you make more confident replacement heifer and herd sire selection decisions, add marketability to your feeder cattle, make faster genetic progress, and more. The best time to get started is when you're already working cattle during branding, weaning, or bull soundness exams. Get started today. Visit Igenity.com or call 1-877-IGENITY to put the power of DNA to work in your herd. You take pride in the beef you raise. Countless hours invested to assure a safe and wholesome calf crop. Why trust that calf crop to just anyone? Experience the new Dinklage difference with a long history and reputation for outstanding performance and cattle care. We use a combination of cutting edge technologies and data driven decision making to establish our place as leaders in the cattle feeding industry. Allow Dinklage to be a part of your team in the quest to maximize your profits. With five locations to serve you in Wyoming, Nebraska, and Colorado. For more information on the new Dinklage difference, stop by one of our yards or visit us on the web at DinklageFeedYards.com. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Matt Fleck in Kansas, who's learning more about genetic profiling. 
iGenity works with its customers, helping them both understand and implement the profile into actionable results. It also fine-tunes the results to suit a producer's individual goals. As seed stock producers can use this technology to select really the very best replacement heifers, herd sires, and flush candidates, as well as target marketing their opportunities to their customers. Commercial producers, they can be confident that the iGenity profile for Angus will help to improve their selection decisions, which will indicate the genetic merit of their animals and really increase the accuracies of the EPDs. For us, we felt that it was important, first of all, to collect the data, but the most important thing we felt was to interpret it for our customers and to provide information as to how they could use that in their own individual programs. So we did, uh, in our advertising, we provided a lot of information uh, regarding the fact that we had DNA tested all the bulls for carcass merit and then for growth traits as it, as it came around in February. And then secondly, we did a, um, a mini seminar, if you will, right before the sale. Uh, we had about 250 of our customers there the night before. So we talked about how to interpret that data and what it meant to them and their bottom line and how they could look at those numbers. So that was an important thing, we thought. So we used it in our advertising. We put it in our catalog. And then uh, finally, we talked about it at the sale indiv with individual customers, but we also did a segment right before the sale where we helped customers understand how to use it. Collecting samples for the iGenity profile is easily done during routine processing. We did it when we freeze branded last year and, and it was a good time for us. We didn't have to run through another time and just pulled blood on them while we were doing that and it was the easiest thing to do. My husband likes to say that uh, a registered cow herd, <laughs> if you have a hundred registered cows, it's like running 500 commercial cows, the number of times that they go through the chute for care. Um, so when the, when the cattle were in, in the chute already for other processes, that's when we drew the blood and not too tough. There are currently three generations of the Lyons family at work on their ranch, and as the demand for beef increases, this new generation will have to keep up with the changes and expectations of a growing market. I see that there's going to be more and more use of the identity profile, and especially the genomically enhanced EPDs and that uh, uh, identity profile for Angus. I see that that's going to be used more and more in the future as more people see the rewards of what it does for them in their calf crop. I think our customers are going to be real excited and pleased when they see a real consistent product and that is their calves and how they perform because they're, they're going to have increased um, trust, if you will, in those numbers that they're looking at as they select their individuals to put in their herd. Beef cattle producers cannot afford to invest in cattle with unknown genetics. Uh, the cattle they introduce into their herd and the decisions they make about their calf crop will really affect the profitability of their herd for years to come. Using the iGenity profile for Angus can help producers take some of the risk out of these important decisions and help ensure their herd is really headed down the most profitable direction. Reporting from outside Manhattan, Kansas, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Now you might have recognized Jan Lyons in that story. She's a former president of NCBA and chair of the Cattleman's Beef Board. For more information about the comprehensive identity profile, visit our website at cattlemantocattleman.org. Stay with us, Baxter Black is up next. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer. One that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two x four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor. So there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features. A lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate. Rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute or other equipment. Tough and practical. That's Big Bend Trailers. 
Designed and built by a working cattleman, you can rely on and trust Big Ben trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, built cattlemen tough. Let's face it, you don't think a lot about your trailer hitch. You use it and forget it. We understand. But at B&W, we think about it. Short nights, the long hauls, never-ending chores, the unthinkable. We think about it all, so you don't have to. B&W, trusted. 70% of consumers want to know where their food comes from, and how can we ignore them? IMI Global offers third-party audited source and age verification essential for export markets and specialty markets like natural, organic, omnivoric, Eskimo, or possibly recovering vegan certified. For quality niche producers, to the big boys, any cattleman who wants to expand his market, you're not just buying this green ear tag, you're buying peace of mind. IMIGlobal.com The boss told me it wasn't necessary to run these cows through a chute. Because Tex had assured him they were all young, sound, and guaranteed bred. Well, Tex was one of your genuine jippo cow traders and had injected more than one load of cows into the boss when he had his back turned. Well, I called Tex and insisted we had to preg check and mouth these cows before I signed off on the deal. Well, it hurt his feelings. He implied I didn't trust him, he said. That and the fact that he didn't have any crails anyway. Well, grudgingly, he hired a couple of sheep herders and they built a temporary holding pen out of snow fence, chicken wire, and steel posts. He rustled up some old panels and the first squeeze chute ever used by Thomas Jefferson. It had a Powder River squeeze and a Tico head gate and it was all the same color, rust. The first cow clomped in and I put on a plastic sleeve. What are you doing, he said. Well, what do you think I'm doing, measuring her for a monocle? Well, they're all bred. They're guaranteed. My brother checked them, and he can tell by the way the hair lays on their back. Well, the first one was open, as were the next seven. We worked for a couple hours, stopping to repair the chute twice. The cows were getting restless. The two sheep herders stood their ground between the chicken wire fence and the herd. They fended him off by shaking a broken plastic whip and an empty dog food bag. Well, Tex was getting mad. Check this one out, he said as he shoved a big horned cow into the squeeze chute. The cow hit the gate just like a mortar shell and Dale clamped the bar down over her neck. She never slowed down. She tore the head gate off and lit out for the high country. The last time I saw her, she was going over a rise. The head gate hung on her neck like a picture frame, dragging two miles of chicken wire, followed by 178 head of guaranteed bread bovine and two sheep herders waving a broken plastic whip and an empty dog food bag. I looked back at Tex and said, you know, sometimes we just get lucky. This is Baxter Black from out there. And thanks, Baxter. We'll be right back. Quality matters to me because our local farmers and ranchers entrust us with the marketing of their livestock each and every week. It's their livelihood and how they provide for their families. Also, friends and families in the community eat at our cafe and watch the auction to be connected with the beef industry. I take great pride in knowing that my livestock auction keeps this community strong and provides our consumers with a great image of the beef they eat. I'm very proud of what we will do here today. Welcome back. Let's take a look at our favorite farm and ranch pictures from across the country in this week's Legacy Photos.
love seeing your photos each and every week. Send in your favorite farm or ranch picture by visiting our website at cattleman to cattleman.org. Next week on NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, we'll spend a day in the life of a ranching family from Kansas who will stop at nothing to tell consumers about beef. Plus, Baxter Black and the week's news and market headlines. That does it for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.